about this. We have open to idea if you have a workshop idea of some that you want to work with, we'll be happy to work with that. Just give us an idea. So Assembly is basically a smart lab that is based in N5 in December 2014 and over the course of over 6 years we have delivered around 250 free workshops. These workshops are divided into 3 basic categories so hack, code and data science. The workshops that uh, deal with embedded systems, IOTs or hardware are categorized as hack and secondly we have workshops which are categorized as code, which include software projects, gaming, any projects including APIs, etc, etc. Lastly, we have data science category, which includes all uh, workshops that are related to artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, etc, etc. Our target audiences are students, professionals and entrepreneurs, but anyone who is interested in our workshop is more than in welcome to join us. And you can know more about us at our forum which is members.theassembly.ae. And don't forget to tag us on our social media, tag us on Facebook and Twitter at Make Smart Things. So you can also visit our YouTube channel which is The Assembly. Alright, so let's start with the coding. So open up a new file in Visual Studio Code and name it anything. I just named it Amazon.py. and what you want to do is you want to install some packages that we'll be using later on in the project. So we'll just go to terminal, open up a new terminal and type in pip install requests. So I have already installed this so it says requirement already satisfied but you make sure that you have these packages installed and then also go ahead and install a package called bs4. So so these packages we will we will require in our uh, project over here. So what we are basically trying to do is we are trying to sc scrape data from Amazon or Amazon's web page. So we will need these uh, packages for that. So let us go ahead and import requests and also we can import beautiful soup right away. So from BS4 import beautiful soap okay so now what the requests package does is it can get you a get to you are get to a url and then beautiful soap can then import or get elements or html data part uh, from that web page so this is what we will do exactly to get our data so first of all we need to get the url of the website that we are going to be scraping in this case the URL of Amazon. So that is in this case I want to scrape the or find the price make a price tracker for as as the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. You can do whatever product you like or any other product the, or the only difference will be the URL everything else remains the same. So now what you will do is just go ahead and copy this URL and get back to your Visual Studio Code and paste this URL as a string. Okay, so now we've got the header uh, URL. Now we'll need a header, the header. So we'll create a dictionary called headers, and uh, what this will include is j data about our web browser. So uh, we'll type in user agent, and then. Uh, you need to find your user agent and that is pretty simple to do. You can just head on to Chrome and just do a quick use, uh, Google search for my user agent and then you will get something like this. Just copy the entire thing and paste it in over here. Okay, so that's it. And now that we have got our URL, we will get use a request module to get the page. So we will create a variable called page and then we will store the page that we get in it. So we will say requests dot requests dot get and then within it takes several it takes some parameters. The first one is the URL itself and the second one are the headers. So headers equal headers. All right, so this will give us the page and now what we want to do is we want to uh, 
uh, we'll use beautiful soap to extract the page as HTML. So we'll parse the uh, data uh, into HTML. So we can say BS for beautiful soup. BS equals beautiful soup, uh, and then within the parentheses we can give in page dot content, and we can we want to parse it into using HTML parser. All right, so this will get the page as an HTML for us and let's see what it actually prints so we can go ahead and print it so we can say bs dot and there is a method called prettyfy which will help us visualize the HTML code better so we'll just go ahead and use that and try to run the project and see okay so we'll just save the code and run it again Okay, it gives us an error for Unicode encode error. So, if in case if you get this error, you can uh, get rid of this error by having this dot encode and then change the encoding to UTF-8. So, hopefully this gets rid of this gets rid of the error and then save and run the code again. So as you can see it printed the entire HTML code for the website you can see spans and several other HTML components and it's quite a long HTML document actually. So yeah so we're basically good and uh, now we can just comment out this print statement to avoid running it every time we run the program. And now what we can do is we can, okay, so let's first go to our Amazon web page and once we are here now what we want to do is we want to maybe get the title of the phone. So maybe we want to save this and also most importantly we want to save this price. So this is what our main target is and also it's good to have the title as well. So you can hit F12 on your keyboard or right click and go to inspect and from there you can choose this option of selecting an element and inspecting it and then click on the title. So and now the point of interest over here is the ID. So what is the ID? We will just copy this ID which is the product title and then we will go to, and we'll scrape this using our beautiful soup. So uh, we can just name it title. So or we can name it product title. So you can say product title equals. Uh, we named it bs. So bs dot find and then id equals. So it will find using the id. So our ID is the one that we just copied so product title and we can go ahead and print this. So let us see what it prints. So we can print the product type. Okay. Okay. Save it and run it. Okay, so it does print the entire span class. So it's a lot, it's a very large span with a lot of spaces. So what one way we can just get the text and not the spans is by typing in dot, uh, not here, sorry, here we can just say dot get text. So this will just give us the text and not the product title. I mean not the product item but the spans. So yep here we are. So this is the code that we just run and as you can see we do not have those spans over here and we just have the text although we have a lot of space, extra spaces in it we can remove those spaces by using a method called strip. 
So, this is a method by which we can just get rid of those extra spaces. So, we can say dot strip and ok never mind save it and run it again ok. So, this is what using the strip and the get text gives us. So, now we get only one line which we wanted. So, this is the title that we have wanted ok. So, we are good till now. Now, what we need to find is the most important thing we need to extract the price from the web page itself. So, let us head on to our web page and see if we can find the id of this thing here. So, we will go back to our selection tool and we want to extract this. Oh wow, so we can just click on it and there it is. So, what we are interested is in what we are interested in is the id. So, the id is price block underscore r price. We copy that, we go back to our visual studio code and we can say price is equal to again bs dot find id equals and then we can just pass in our id oh i copied it by mistake so i'll just go back and copy this again okay and yeah let's see what it prints first so we'll print the price and see what output do we get here save the code and run it ok. So, it gave us the span again. So, just to avoid that we will get the text only we will get the text and might as well ok there are no extra spaces but okay, so we do not need to do the call the strip method on that ok. So, we get the price but notice that we have some weird symbols in there uh, and and we might want to get rid of this comma as well if we are trying to convert this price into a float for let us say comparison later on or you know several things we want to convert it into float for. So, what we will do now is we will convert we will get the price without the AED and those extra symbols and then we can then convert it to float. So, we can say price equals price and then uh, we can say 4 colon 9 ok num lock on. So, 4 colon 9. So, yeah so 4 essentially means 1 2 3 4 0 1 2 3 4 and then till the ninth one. So, let us try and run this code ok we need to save it first and then run it again oh ok I did not have a print statement. So, sorry for that and let us print the price again and see what difference does this make. So, it is ok. So, now we have we have been successful in just extracting the whole number value of the price. So, we are not interested in the value after the decimal or this AED thingy. So, we will just we are just concerned with the price itself and now we want to convert it to float. So, in order to convert it to float we first need to get rid of this comma because otherwise it will give us an error. So, we will create a variable called price um, ok we can just call it price float equals uh, float we will type cast the price into float, but in order for us to do that we will need to first have it uh, I mean replace the comma with uh, nothing. So, basically we just want to remove get or get rid of the comma. So, we can do that by saying uh, price dot ok dot replace within the double uh, double quotes or single quotes 
the comma and we want to replace the comma with nothing. So, this essentially means that we just want to remove the comma and now we can try printing out this price. So, we can try printing out the price float and see what it gives us. Save the code, run it. All right, so now you can see we get 3,256.0, and this signifies that it is converted to it has been converted to a float. So yes, this is what we were expecting, and this is what we wanted. So yeah, that's pretty much it with this. And yeah, we can then okay. We why don't we just create keep all of this in a uh, method so we can all will come to that later now what we need to do is we need we want the system to send us an email to notify us whenever the price uh, fluctuates or goes below our required value so let's say if i want to buy the phone only when the price goes below 3100 i can program it to do that so let's go ahead and do that so in order to do that we we'll first need to import something called SMTP lips. So this is the package that enables us to send emails. So SMTP lib. Okay, we'll import that and we'll create a function to send an email. So def send email. Okay, so before we even get into sending an email and stuff what you might want to do is you want to allow less secure apps for your account that you want to use so the account that you will be sending emails from you want to make sure uh, just search in less secure apps google and then go into your accounts and turn this make sure it's turned on otherwise you won't be able to get those emails and next thing is turn on two-step verification for your account and the last thing is you can have uh, your app password so you can type in app password for google and then you can generate app password so rather than typing your actual password in the visual studio file itself which is not secure if someone use uh, looks at your code you can generate a password for your a random password for your app so let, like we need a password for gmail so we'll select gmail and then whatever you are using so in my case i'm using a windows computer so i'll use that and then i'll generate a password so this is the password that i'll need to use when i log in uh, to gmail for the next time so yeah that's pretty much it and now let's head back to our email method so in our email method what we want to do is first we want to set up the connection between our server and the Google's server. So we'll create a variable called server equals to SMTP lib dot SMTP and then the first argument is the name of the Google SMTP server which is SMTP dot gmail dot com and the second argument it takes is the port number I guess 587. Yep. So now what we need to do is we want to say server dot hello. So yeah, it's kind of funny, but this command basically establishes a connection between your server and the Google's or Gmail server. So yeah, and then what we need to do is we want to encrypt our traffic. Uh, so we'll we'll call uh, server dot start TLS. This will basically encrypt our traffic over the network and finally again we'll call server dot hello. Okay, the next step is to log in to our Google account. So we'll do that. So for that we'll have server dot login and as expected it will take two parameters the username and the password. So go ahead and type in your gmail id so and the second one is the password so for the password we can just 
paste in the password that we just generated using the app password so yeah or if you don't want to do that you can just type in your normal password that you use for your gmail if you don't want to go into the trouble of creating an app password and you think that no one's it's secure and no one's gonna open this file so you can just use your password as well that's completely fine and up to you so now let's begin typing in the email itself so we have the subject body and uh, the message so for the subject we'll have we can type in something like uh, hey the price fell down do you wanna buy or something like that you know you can just give it anything you want and then we need to have a body for our email so body we can say something like uh, okay go order now order now before the black price fluctuates or something like that and then maybe we can pass in the so on the next line we can give them the address or the web page so that they can just click there and be redirected to that web page and directly buy from them so i can say link and then we can just paste the link that we had over here so just copy this link and paste it there yeah so that's pretty much it now we have the body section complete and the subject and the body both of them are complete now we'll do message equals so i will create an f string for that okay so subject is equal to subject colon and this would be our subject okay it's not caps subject subject and our we can give some new lines and then we can have our body so the body will be our body itself so we don't need a title for that we can just say body so yeah this is basically the formatting of our email so email will have the subject first and then the body so this is why we are doing over here and uh, lastly we'll have server dot send send mail and over here it it, it requires two arg or actually three arguments which are so the first one is the person the sender's email the second one is the receiver's email and the third one is what message that we want to send them so for in my case i'll just have the email sent to me so i am the sender i am the receiver and this is the message fine and lastly we can clean up and tidy up the resources that we were using and we can say server dot quit all right so this is all we have with our email method and now what we can do is we can create all of this as a method so we can put all of this as a method so def and uh, we can name it something okay what should we name it we can name it check product price so we can name it check phone price or maybe yeah. check phone price and then this all can go into that okay so in our main lab we can say if and might as well just return the price in the uh, check price method so we can return the the price that we converted as float so price float okay so now we can say if uh, the check phone price we just copy this method 
or we can call this method and save it here first so we can save the value from there in a variable called price we can say price equals this because this method returns a price and we can then check if price is less than some amount so just for the sake of testing and now i will give a price which is higher than the actual price just so that we can see the the email being sent to us so i can right now the price was around 2200 so i'll just say if the price is less than 4000 okay then send an email it's called the function which says send an email send email okay so yeah let's run it and check if we get an email we'll save the code and we'll run it okay so we get an error which is smpt lib okay so we named it wrong so it should be smtp rather than smpt smtp lib save it again and run it hopefully it works this time and yeah it did print it okay so maybe before we just quit the server we can add a print statement to know to see that the email has been sent so we can say something like email sent we save it again and run the program okay still running okay it says email sent now let's go to our gmail and check all right so as you can see we have got two emails so this is our subject hey the price fell down okay i spelled down wrong do you wanna buy wanna is also kind of wrong spelled wrong <laughs> go order now before the price fluctuates and this is the link which will take us to the same website so you can just go there and buy it from here so yeah okay so now what we want to do is we'll head back over here this thing works great but it would be nice if we could just you know kind of run keep the script running like let's say it runs for every hour or once a day or that uh, the time really depends upon you how much how frequently you want it to run so maybe it can go to amazon and check for the price price fluctuation twice a day which is quite okay and uh, one other thing that would be great if, that we could do is what if we could just get those prices along with the timestamp and then save it in a csv file so that maybe later we can see what are the trends in the prices and you know we can do a lot of stuff using those so let's try and do that so in order to use csv files we need to import a package called csv okay and uh, we'll just include it in this method itself or we can create another method but uh, never mind we'll just use this method for now so before the return statement we'll add in the code for the csv so first of all what we need to do is we need to create a file if it is not already existing so first i'm assuming that we don't have any file right now so we just create a new file so let's do that so with open and i'll just name it price so price.csv and this is important so over here you want to give it the i mean the what do you call the mode so the mode is basically if you want to read the file write to the file so in our case we don't want to write to the file but append to the file so you will understand more about this when you try to read run the program so imagine that you have run this program uh, for let's say it has been running for two days okay so and then you finally pla said plan to stop it so you stop the program and then you run it again so now if you have set it as right what it will do is it will overwrite the existing data and that data will be completely lost so we don't want to do that we, instead we want to have a which stands for append so append is basically adding on to the same data that we had previously so it will just 
not overwrite and keep your uh, previous data as well now we want to create a csv writer object and in order to do that just create a variable called writer or whatever you feel like writer equals csv dot writer and it takes a few arguments and these arguments are basically the file and the line terminator now the file name in our case is uh, what do we call the price dot csv so okay uh, i think i'm writing in the wrong place yes i am so maybe i'll just go back to where i was okay i was editing it here and then i went somewhere else I'm sorry for that so yeah uh, append that and another thing is we will just call it are as file so we call that as our file and what we want to do is now we will create a csv writer so writer is equal to csv dot writer and it takes a few arguments first is the file name which is our file and then this we want to the next one is line terminator and you'll understand why we are using line terminator when we don't use it so <laughs> let's say if you try the code without the line terminator what you'll end up getting in the csv file is like every time you write to the file it leaves a it leaves a one line gap and then writes to the next line so you want to make sure that the line terminator is set to as backslash n so that it doesn't leave those extra blank lines in between okay so uh, once we're done with that we need to create some kind of fields that we want to write in uh, so rows or fields that we want to write in so we'll create a variable called fields okay not files fields equal and i'll create a list and i'll write okay so i basically want to have two these are these will be the headings for my two columns so one is the timestamp and the second one will be the price so i can just call it price and then maybe aed okay yeah so that's it and yeah now we want to get extract the timestamp so for that we we'll need to import another package import date time okay so We'll import date time and when we come here we can get the timestamp so timestamp we can create a variable and that is very right okay timestamp equals and i'll create an f string for that and okay in the f string we have uh, we have first we'll have the date or let's say so we'll have date time dot date time dot date time dot date time dot date so we'll have the date first we'll have the date and then we'll have the time so because if you use the just the date time dot date time dot now it will give you something which is you know not very understandable so i prefer this way of having the date and time separately but then this is up to the personal preferences of the person so you can do whatever you feel like doing so yeah in the date and then inside the date it is date time dot date time dot now so this will just give us the current date and then I want to have a comma and uh, after that we want to have the current time so for the time what we can do is we can have date time dot date time dot time and within parentheses we can give it again date time dot date time dot now so this will get the exact current time okay again i forgot this parentheses over here as well okay yep so 
that's the, for the timestamp so this will get us the current time a uh, current date and the current time with the and both of them will be separated by a comma so now we'll just write this to our file so we'll say writer dot write row and this is a method to write one row and if you have several rows there is a method called write rows you can use that so i'm just i'll just pass in the uh what you call the my as a list the my two arguments that i want to write into the file so uh, what i want to write is the timestamp and the second one is the price so in our case it was named price float so we'll just write that so now what we are doing here is first we wrote uh, yeah okay i my bad we didn't actually write these fields so just go ahead and writer dot write row and fields so yeah so first we write the heading for the fields and then we have the timestamp and the price now if you can see there is already a mistake in this code so because what happens is every time this code runs we are writing the timestamp and price again and again and again and again we don't want that to happen we want the timestamp and the price as the heading of the columns and then we have the timestamps and the prices themselves so we don't want this uh, text repeating itself but this code will keep on repeating that so we'll uh, get a way uh, to undo this and we'll fix this right now so just uh, for us to know we can have print statement to let us know that it wrote data so wrote data to file perfect so now let's fix this problem so how we can fix this problem is by going back some uh, okay so before even when we open the file so we can check that if the file so what we basically will be doing is we'll be checking if the file already exists so if the file is already there we won't write the headings and if the file is not there we will write the new headings so we'll say if and we'll need to import OS for this so because we are checking the path so we'll need OS for that so import OS and then we will just check if the file exists so we'll say if not OS dot path dot exists and I I am just creating this file because when you create a file like this it will create the file in the same directory as your uh, code file so that will be dot slash means that is in the same directory so we'll just search for this and we'll see if os.path.exist will tell us if the file exists or not and we are checking that if it does not exist then what we will do is we will create a variable which says file underscore exists equals false actually we'll just create it before and then uh, so we'll create the variable before make it true by default so in case if the file exists it will turn the variable false and what we can do now is before we write these fields so the part where we are writing the headings or the fields we can do a check so we can check if not file exists which basically means if the file does not exist then we will write these rows so i hope you understand what i mean by this so if the file does not exist then only we will give the heading so this is think of this as the heading for the columns in an excel sheet so we only want the heading to be there once and not after every value or if after every cell so this is what we are trying to do over here so if the so for the first time when the file is created 
uh, put these headings there okay so if the file is already existing now what we do is we don't write these headings again we just fill in the excel sheet with the data okay so i hope this is clear now and what we can do is save and try to run the code so let's run it okay we but we never called this okay we call this function because it is already in the what we call this function which is the check phone price function okay it wrote file to the data so let's check that so i wrote data to the file and not file to the data my bad <laughs> yeah so we can go to our directory where our file is there so as you can see my amazon.py is here and it created price.csv in the same directory so let's just open up file, this file and see what are the contents so here we have the headings which are timestamp and the price and then we have the timestamp itself the date separated and the time separated by a comma so this is much more readable than the if we do date time dot date time dot now and then we have the price so just as a test of our program we'll just close this and rerun our program to see if we what happens if we run the code again do we get the headings again with that or did we solve that problem so let's uh, run our co code again okay so it says row data to the file and sent an email okay let's go back there open up our csv file and here we go so it didn't print the or write the headings twice it just wrote the so it went to the paths and checked if this file exists and which turned out to be true and then uh, as in our code we said that if the file is already existing we don't need to write the headings again so it didn't write that so yeah and you can see that the timestamps are different so yeah that's it and one more thing one last thing that we might want to do is we would like to have this code run automatically uh, at given regular intervals so let's say we want to run this code every hour or six hours or 12 hours that the frequency is up to you you can change it accordingly so while true so this is an infinite loop and what we are trying to do is we're getting the price and this method check phone price also has the code for writing to the file so we can i mean we can separate the writing code from this but I mean it's fine for now uh, you can go ahead and change if you guys want and also make this a more appropriate value so this is less than the actual value so when it uh, when this condition is evaluated true I need to be sent an email and we can also break out of the infinite loop and also one more thing is okay all right so we need to do a sleep okay first we need to import time dots import time a library called time so okay import time and using this library what we can do is we can have our program stop for a while and then run again so it basically sleeps so we can say time dot sleep and here we can pass in the number of seconds that we want the, the or delay the execution of a program by so let's say if we want to delay it by an hour it will be 60 seconds multiplied by 60 minutes which will be 3600 seconds and if you want to make it 10 hours you can just make it 36000 seconds right or let's say just for the purpose of testing now i'll just make it 10 seconds so this will go to amazon the code uh, we'll go to Amazon uh, every 10 seconds, check the price uh, and write it to the file and if the price is lower than my required price, it will send me an email and break out of the loop. So save this code and run it again and see what it gives us. So 
okay it wrote data to the file and now it will wait for 10 seconds so as you can see the program has not terminated but is not doing anything so it's basically sleeping for 10 seconds and after 10 seconds it wrote again now it's again waiting for 10 seconds and this will go on forever until I get at the price to be less than 3100 so yeah and we can just manually stop this code for now change this to maybe 10 hours or something so maybe 36,000 and now if we go to our price.csv and check the contents there we should have some a few entries there so yeah uh, this is the two times that we ran our code before and these three are for our current iteration of the code so we ran this code and as you can see this code ran and yeah it pretty much did what we wanted it to do so i hope this you guys now can are able to create your own amazon web price tracker using web scraping and python so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and a sub to the channel would be amazing also don't forget to share this video with your friends so that they also know how easy it is to make things that you know kind of uh, ease your daily life routine or your work so until next time see you bye bye